Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ide Viloria again. I'll be talking on the impact of high volume suction in the reduction of aerosols. A dental aerosol is produced by hand pieces, ultrasonic scalers, and three-way syringes. To review, there are different types of aerosols based on particle size. You have the spatter or splatter, which is more than 50 microns, droplets is less than 50 microns, and the droplet nuclei is less than or equal to 10 microns. To give you an idea how small the SARS-CoV-2 is, it's about 0.12 micron. Therefore, it is something that you don't see. According to studies, 90% of the aerosols produced are the extremely small particles less than five microns. The one that we can see are the splatter, which is more than 50 microns in size. Should we be afraid of it? No, it's because it will land immediately in any surface. How about the droplets? What happens to it once it gets out of the mouth? It will remain suspended until it evaporates to become droplet nuclei. A droplet nuclei contains bacteria and viruses related to respiratory infections. And this is the reason why ADA and CDC, or Center for Disease Control and Prevention, made an announcement or appeal to reduce aerosol generating procedures. The ADA guidelines, as well as the CDC states that Reduce aerosol production as much as possible through the use of hand instrumentation and employ the use of dental dump and high volume evacuator. So why do we need HVE? It is needed because once the aerosols become airborne, aerosol particles can linger in the operatory for an hour or more, while splatter lands on the surfaces immediately surrounding the treatment area. This poses a risk for the spread of the common colds and influenza, herpes, viruses, pathogenic streptococci or staphylococci, SARS, the SARS-1 and 2, and tuberculosis. Studies on HBE compared with the saliva ejector said that there is a 90% reduction of aerosols reaching the clinicians when high volume evacuator is used. Why is this so? The high volume evacuator has a large diameter on the tip, what about eight millimeters, that allows for the removal of high volumes of air in a short time, which reduces the amount of bio aerosols by up to 90%. This is a video of the three root canal treatment I did last June 21 or yesterday. And I asked permission from the patients if I can take a video for lecture purposes. Let's watch this one minute video. My first case is a maxillary second molar, tooth 17. The tooth was suffering from symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. After anesthetizing the tooth, I placed the rubber dam and started to remove the carious lesion and proceeded with access cavity preparation. As you can see, the rubber dam shape is still dry, even after 24 seconds of drilling. The next tooth is the maxillary lateral incisor, tooth 2 tooth, which has a hyster fractured crown, and the tooth is suffering from necrosis with asymptomatic apical peridontitis. On my last case, the maxillary first molar, I did the same thing, the use of HBE and the rubber dam. The purpose of this video is to enlighten the viewers that we really need an HBE to catch the aerosols just before it leaves the oral cavity. And at the same time, for the viewers to appreciate the role also of rubber dam in the reduction of aerosolized saliva. Now, it's your choice. 
Would you want to catch the aerosols before it leaves the mouth, thus reducing the aerosols? Or would you rather let the aerosols escape and catch them once it leaves out of the mouth? How do we decide? Make sure that whatever decision you might have, it is based on a current evidence. These days, we rely on the ADA and CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Both of them stated that if aerosol generating procedures are necessary for dental care, use four-handed dentistry, high evacuation suction, and dental dams to minimize droplet spatter and aerosols. These are some of the studies published last May 20, 2020. So they said that what can we do to prevent this virus? They also stated that we you have to use high volume evacuation. And another study released in 2018 of April, high volume evacuator in reducing aerosol and exploration worth by clinicians they have concluded that high volume evacuator devices have been found to be efficient in substantive reduction of aerosols and should be exercised in routine dental procedures. Another study, the evaluation of the spotter reduction effectiveness of two dry field isolation techniques. They have concluded that use of dental dam with HBE or the isolate system significantly reduced spotter overall compared with the use of HBE alone. So in this case, you can use the HBE together with the isolate, okay? These are other references used in this video or in this presentation. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. I hope you have a better understanding now on the role of HBE in the reduction of aerosol. Keep on watching my videos, and if you like it, just hit the like button. And if you think it is useful, please subscribe. Thank you again. This is Ida Viloria. Keep safe, everyone. Thank you very much.